Okay, so just moving on um, to the next slide. So why have we had to been why have we had to review our curricula? Some of you will have heard me give this this uh, talk before, but if you just bear bear with me, it's really uh, to to because we've adapt, I've adjusted it slightly following on from the GMC's uh, approval process. So. A few years ago, the GMC developed the Gen Generic Professional Capabilities Framework um, and Excellence by Design Standards in, in response to the Shape of Training review. And I would certainly encourage those of you who haven't read the um, GPC framework to have a look at it. It's actually a very helpful document and is also uh, has been is being used by all medical colleges. Um, or medical Royal Colleges reviewing their, their curricula to ensure alignment with this framework because previously all specialties um, there, was, there was no consistency regarding curricula frameworks uh, so actually this is now underpinning all medical uh, postgraduate medical training across the UK. Um, our cur current curricula are, under, are underpinned by CANMEDS, a Canadian um, medical education uh, structure, but I say we now, we've now moved to the GPC and the GPC framework has nine key domains which are, are indicated on the right hand side. And the aim was that the the GPC or the new framework will produce doctors with generic with generic skill set whilst also maintaining specialisms to support transferable skills for service delivery. Next slide. So just a bit of just a bit of uh, information on the consultation. We've we've this has been uh, the, the the revision of the curricula has been going on now for way, uh, almost three years, um, and extensive consultation has uh, been taken place. Uh, and just there's just the just the, the the list of of committees, areas, groups that we have um, been liaising with the curriculum revision working group has uh, is quite a big group um, and has all the chairs of the specialty advisory committees and sub-specialty advisory committees um, representation from other groups psychiatry, psychiatry trainees patient lay and carer representatives etc so um, I think Liz if you click again I think there's another is there another oh yeah and we've also uh, sought consultation from a great many people some of you will hopefully have have commented on the consultation that took place last year prior to us submitting the uh, curricular framework to the GMC um, and actually they've been very very helpful there's been a long conversation with the GMC regarding the curricular framework and they have um, approved the the framework there's some some changes still to be made but overall um, they are like our direction of of travel next slide please okay so we have high level outcomes instead of intended learning outcomes now. I won't go through all the of these, but each one of our nine high level outcomes maps to each one of the nine GPC domains. Not all curricula in other specialties have done it this way, but this is what we decided we would do. So those, that's the list of high level uh, um, outcomes there's there's more information within within the uh, on the college website regarding actually the details of the the hlos but with these are the condensed uh, subject areas of the hlos uh, next slide please so what's our framework so the framework consists of obviously several several areas we have the psychiatry silver guide which is an overarching guide to training in psychiatry and i'll talk about that in a minute we have the core specialty and subspecialty curricula again which I'll, I'll speak about we then have and this is the this is the sort of um the the the, the new the, the main the main change to the curricula um system that you that you know is the placement specific uh pdps which support trainees through uh their training, so placement specific personal development plans. There's ARCP decision aids to support and guide ARCP panels. And obviously we have assessments, both formative and summative, summative assessments throughout training. So for the workplace-based assessments, as well as the exams. Okay, so next, the next slide. The, um, 
silver guide um is 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 basically the psychi a psychiatrized i know that's not not a correct word uh, or version of the gold guide this is all the information that currently sits at the front of each of the current curricula we've taken all that away into a separate document called the silver guide and that's where information is for trainees and trainers regarding the framework time after training training pathways caesar and equivalents assessment strategy roles and responsibilities amongst many others so that document is a separate document and is regulated by the gmc next slide please so we've mapped we're going to put a uh, on the implement college the curriculum hub there'll be a um 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 information on, on on the mapping but basically we had 19 in the core curriculum had 19 ILOs with 319 competencies we've moved to nine high level outcomes and 75 key cap capabilities um, so we have condensed and but certainly not not um, diluted uh, psychiatry next slide please so this is an example or well, this is this is a the sort of HLO1 of the um, core psychiatry curriculum. I, I, I'm, I'm, it, there's a lot of words on it. The, the idea is not, not for you to necessarily read all the words, but just to look at the right hand side. Each one of those paragraphs is a key capability. So what you will see on the on the on the on the website at the, at the not at the at the, the, the curricula on the website at the moment, but they, they look in a slightly different format to this. Um, but basically, the key capabilities are the things that we um, will be within the uh, PDP system as well. So this is really to show the show you the structure of the curriculum and the key capabilities on the right hand side. So the next slide, please. So just, this is the information we sent to the, the GMC. I'll read it out just just to this is the explanation we gave and this is what they then approved. Um, so the individualized flexible PDPs underpinned by the high level outcomes allow the trainee and trainer to select various relevant key capabilities at the beginning of the placement and discuss activities that should be undertaken to achieve these capabilities. Um, evidence of achievement will be via the workplace based assessments, which are also underpinned by the high level outcomes, reflective practice amongst others. And in psychiatric supervision, which we have, which is maintained at one hour per week, the trainee and trainer will be able to review progress on a regular basis and add further capabilities and adjust the activities as required. And um, we'll move on to the, the PDP talk shortly. So by the end of the placement, the PDP will be the evidence of the journey that the trainee has undertaken during the placement and will form the basis of the psychiatric supervision report. This will then inform the educational supervisor report and ARCP decision when appropriate. It will also inform the next PDP, especially if the trainee is needing performance support. So that's the information that went to the the um, the GMC. So uh, the next slide, please. So what we've what we're trying to get what I'm getting, getting across is that the HLOs run throughout um, training, underpin training. Um, now this is not a music stave, obviously, but it was just an example to show you how things, how, how it does, they do underpin everything that is is done. So the HLOs there on the left hand side, the horizontal lines, uh, key capabilities are the notes currently. So there's a range of key capabilities uh, for each of the HLOs for core, and then the the higher uh, curricular and extension. The HLOs in in higher curricula they're all the same are an extension of the core HLOs but the capabilities within each of the higher curricula are, dif are different from one another there's a lot of harmonization but obviously we, we, we've we've maintained the all the CCTs rather than um, uh, and that's that so we have there are some uh, differences within the key capabilities rightly so within all of the higher specialties but there's a lot of harmonization so at the beginning of a placement the trainee and trainer set up the first placement specific PDP, undertake workplace based assessments. Again, these are all underpinned by the HLOs, which I'll talk about later on. Then there's a psychiatric supervision report, which comes together uh, in a way it's coming together throughout the training of the six months rather than all being done right at the end. Um, then training moves to a new placement or stays in the same placement, depending on where they are in training, undertakes the second report, workplace based assessments to show that they're gaining capabilities. Second report leading to the educational supervisor report and then the ARCP decision. And that cycle then repeats itself each year. 
throughout training until CCT. Next slide, please. So timescales. The at the moment, obviously, we've had the final approval, uh, going through a final approval process. But in the, in the GM, this is more this is more sort of tying up loose ends rather than changing the the entire strategy. So we, we are um, um, uh, obviously piloting new new starting uh, CT ones and ST fours in February, um, in a couple of weeks' time, and then the full. Um, um, implementation for all other trainees in or is in August 2022 and there's also a transition there's a transition plan in 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 place next slide please this is just um, a screenshot of the implementation hub on the on the college website where which is being built and there's a lot of information there already so we would encourage you to ha to have a look at a look at these this area uh, to help with um, the implementation and also in, increase knowledge regarding the new framework. Uh, and again, this will be built on. There'll be a range of videos being developed um, for for training as well as time go, as time goes by. Next slide. So lots a lots a lot of other things are going on. So the portfolio online is being updated to to help with the uh, delivery of the new new curriculum framework. There's training resources and videos, which I've said are, are, are there or are being developed. Um, there's going to be communication regarding trainee transition, dean liaison meetings, and dean liaison, sorry, meetings and support. I say we talked about the implementation hub and um, accessible curricula online, as I've said. So lots going on, um, but we are on track. And um, it's it's a, certainly a very positive, exciting time for for psychiatry. Just by way of explaining the reason why um, we have a framework and the approval process. So just to go back to the silver guide, um, that's approved by the GMC. The curricula are approved by the GMC, but the PDPs are owned and managed by the college. Um, and so we'll be hearing more about those. Let's say those those shortly. But this this allows the flexibility. Um, to develop activities um, and to uh, share experience across the UK and also be proactive in, in, in uh, developing capable uh, activities for new areas of psychiatry that are that are, uh, will come come in the future. Next slide, please. OK, so questions, ask us anything again after after the talks, um, after the break, come back and ask questions, ask them in the chat. Um, we've also got regular um, drop in sessions on a Thursday morning um, throughout the next probably six months. Um, just if anyone's any has anybody has any questions or queries regarding the framework or any